Hey there, Files. Today I'm going to be reviewing Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem and seeing where it ranks amongst every theatrically released TMNT movie. I just want to say that I love the Turtle Brothers in this. It's the first time where all of them are being played by teenagers and you can really feel that energy. Not only are they more distinct in their personalities this time around, but they actually feel like teenagers as opposed to how grown-ups see 15-year-olds. The authenticity plays into loving this band of brothers like never before. You feel their energy, you feel their quips and their dynamics, and they're all shown pretty dang well. You really feel like they're brothers with their own lives and distinct personalities. They aren't just variations of each other with one unique personality trait. And you really see this because Donnie is finally his own character. I really like the not so obvious nerdy vibe to him, and yet there's still this inclination towards technology that you clearly see from him. Mikey is as funny as ever, and the dream that they give him is actually really nice. Like if Mikey were to pursue an extracurricular, it would be this. And I don't want to give it away now because I want you to enjoy it in the movie. Raph is done pretty well, but of the Turtle Brothers, he is the one with the most left to explore. We just get these moments of anger and what his true personality is, but for as an introduction into this version of the Turtles, I think it works pretty well. And finally, Leo, he's the one I resonate most with, especially with all of the embarrassing stuff he goes through. The best scenes are truly when all of the brothers are on screen together. That chemistry is perfect and it absolutely leads to some hilarious moments. Shout out to Nicholas Cantu, Brady Moon, Micah Abbey, and Shimon Brown Jr. I'll be looking forward to your series and sequel. All that being said, Splinter did steal the movie a few times. He's voiced by Jackie Chan and what I love that they did with him this time around, it's that he's not just Master Splinter. He is the most single dad that we've ever seen Splinter be. And don't even get me started on the backstory scene. He has this sick hairdo and the the turtles are so cute and you just feel the connection as a family more than you ever have. All in all, this family dynamic is my favorite part of the movie by far. But besides the turtles and Splinter, there isn't all too much else to rave about. The soundtrack, the visuals, and Paul Rudd's character are also very good, but everything else about this movie is okay to meh. The biggest whiff about this movie is definitely Bebop and Rocksteady. They're basically just placeholders along with the rest of the mutants that we see. I mean, they are there for thematic reason but most of the time they just feel like they're to be part of some jokes and superfly was okay he's voiced by ice cube and he does bring some energy to this character but at the end of the day he just feels like a conventional supervillain. i just really didn't like a lot of the side characters overall and sadly this goes for april too ayo adibri plays her as well as she can but ultimately this character just feels flat and don't get me wrong she's not terrible but she's just okay again and there's just nothing that really feels fresh with her apart from one joke that goes on for pretty dang long. But she definitely doesn't deserve the hate that I saw she was getting when the trailers came out. And in general too, I just wasn't the biggest April fan. I feel like none of the movies have really gotten her to a point where she's stealing the show, at least in some of the scenes. Overall, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem is a fun yet flawed movie. With the turtles and Splinter being as strong as ever and some Spider-Verse inspired animation, there's plenty to love for every TMNT fan. Even if you've never seen any TMNT content, this is still worth checking out. I give Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem a 2.5 out of 5 stars. For as much as I did enjoy this movie, there are some issues with the pacing and plot, and it just feels a bit bloated with stuff that dips in quality. But anyway, this mixed bag is still worth checking out. But that does beg the question, where does it rank amongst every other theatrically released TMNT movie? Let's find out as I rank all seven of them. In seventh place, I have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 from 1993. The final film from the 90s trilogy is by far the worst one. It's so actively bad that the few bright spots I did have with this movie are completely clouded and washed away with the boringness that exudes in this movie. It sucks so bad that it leaves a bad taste in my mouth for this entire trilogy, even though I really like the first two. Somehow everything is worse, from the quality of the suits, to the quality of the acting, to the quality of the overall filmmaking. And the worst part of it is, it's not fun. I feel like that's one of the major things that makes a Turtles movie a Turtles movie, and that it's fun. I don't know, if you're just as boring and blah as this movie can be, can you even be considered a TMNT movie? But anyway, now that I got this off my chest, I can finally never think of this again. In sixth place, I have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 2014. The first of the Michael Bay produced TMNT movies from the 2010s is not good. 
<laughs> this is a clear step up from seventh, but this embodies so many things of what we make fun of Michael Bay about. And it's not even directed by him. It takes a special type of bad writing for me to dislike Mikey too. Oh, and that origin story is horrible. And I gotta say, this is probably the blandest one of all of the movies because I've forgotten most of it. So let's just move on. In fifth place, I have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Out of the Shadows from 2016. The glow up in this franchise is real as it went from bad to stupid fun and I'm so glad it did. Still didn't love Mikey in this, but it's fun and that's all I could ask for. I might have a slight bias because of how much NBA is surprisingly in this movie, but overall it's still an enjoyable time and you get a better Bebop and Rocksteady as opposed to another movie that I'll talk about later. As a whole, the Michael Bay era of the Turtles was collectively the worst era, but at least it ended on a higher note than I ever thought it would. And that's despite the nightmare fuel that is Splinter in this. Ah, sorry. Jump scare. <laughs> Coming in at fourth is the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles from 1990. Watching this recently gave me the crazy realization that I've never actually saw this as a kid, but I'm glad I finally did as I got to enjoy and fall in love with those wonderful turtle costumes. We need the Henson Company to be featured in bigger movies like this again, because imagine how good these suits could look if they were made today. And sure, there's a suspension of disbelief, but they look a thousand times better than the Shrek monstrosities that we get in the Michael Bay films. Shout out to Mikey in this and the Critters poster that's featured in one of the backgrounds. However, this was the beginning of the realization of how dirty Donnie would be done in most of these movies. In third place, I have TMNT from 2007. This animated feature is the most adult version of the turtles that we've ever got in theaters and it's different from what I remember. It's allowed for us to see the turtles as they've gone on in their later years. We don't get the beginning and origin of their story, which I can actually appreciate despite its mostly angsty tone. And it's this feeling of history that allows for a natural rift between Leo and Raph to be so believable. And this also gives us a glimpse into how Donnie and Mikey would try to adapt in the modern world if they weren't out doing ninja stuff. And although this era was a quick and angsty one, I wouldn't be opposed to seeing these ideas be implemented in future installments of the TMNT movies. I mean, they just do some really cool stuff in here that they don't fully capitalize on, but I would be excited to see it done again and hopefully better. In the second slot, I have Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, Secret of the U's from 1991. This was my personal introduction to the Turtles. I would watch the crap out of this one when I was a kid, and even though it does have two in the title, this was one that I thought was like a standalone movie for some reason. Toka and Razor were my bebop and rocksteady, and I loved them so much. And how could I not mention the ninja rap, which is a five out of five scene in cinema history, and it is just amazing and worth watching this movie for that scene alone. Live action wise, this is peak turtles coming in at number one is teenage mutant ninja turtles mutant mayhem it might be the newest of the turtle films but i assure you there is no recency bias in this choice as it is clearly the best made turtles movie and despite some issues i have with the movie and the plot the pacing and some of the side characters i'd rewatch this one before i even think about any other turtles movie except for that vanilla ice scene that's that's gotta be a top tier scene for this. But all right, those are my thoughts on Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem and where it ranks amongst every theatrically released Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles movie. Let me know which one's your favorite down in the comments below and even give me your full ranking. As always, thank you guys for liking, commenting, and subscribing. Stay tuned for more Yeti Films content and I'll write you later.